I'm comedian Steven Springer. Stay tuned for Tape with Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about Doug. Shalom, and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. Glad you could be with us today. My guest today is Stephen Springer. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Stephen is a native Chicagoan. He is a comedian. He started his comedy career while living in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, he has a deadpan delivery, as it's known, and a self uh, deprecating style reminiscent of uh, one of his idols, Rodney Dangerfield. He's performed throughout Chicagoland, including Zanies, Laugh Factory, as well as clubs throughout the country. In his 55 years, he's lived a life that was meant to be talked about on stage, including his family, multiple jobs, including he was a correctional officer. Um, he's a well-defined character, uh, like his favorite comedian and mentor, uh, Uncle Larry Reed, who many who know comedy know Larry Reed. Um, he glides his one-liners, one to another. He is someone you'll want to hear. And uh, I, I want to welcome to the show, and just by chance, uh, his mom married into our family, so we're actually related. So, um, uh, Steve, welcome to the show. I, I'm so glad to have you on. Exactly. So, Stephen, you've been a comedian for how many years now? 14. 14 years. How do you get started in comedy? You know, people, they, they, they go to school and they work for a living, and all of a sudden you said 14 years ago, you know, I should get up and get on stage and talk before people. How'd you get started to begin with? Well, I was working in Cook County Jail and I would go home and tell people stories, my friends and family stories, and uh, they couldn't believe it. They'd always laugh. So I figured, you know, if I could make them laugh, maybe I could get on the stage. And it took me several years of watching it to get the courage to go up. So did you, did, were you ever on stage before? Did you like, did you stand up at your bar mitzvah and perform before people? You know, things like that. Did, did, you, did you grow up like, uh, 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 you know, as an outgoing person where you were able to, 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 no, to be before yeah, people? A, this is like a midlife crisis for me. I was in my mid forties when I started and I always been shy and reserved and never, you know, never, it, was, it took a lot to get up on stage in front of people. So we've no, known each other for a short while. Uh, you know, for a while actually, but 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 gotten to know each other better for a short while, and and you know I've watched a lot of your videos and stuff, and you look very natural on stage. Did did that grow as your time yeah. uh, on stage uh, improved as far as uh, being on stage more often? It took several years. Some people they get it right away. It took me several years to you know get to get comfortable being in front of people. Uh -huh. and, and it's funny because when people t look at you and talk to you, you have a very straight face and all of a sudden you like open up and people are laughing at you and they're, they're into what you're saying. Um, do you write all your own material? Do you sometimes uh, watch other comedians? I know you have your, your, your mentors and your, right. your, your, the people that you like. Do you, do you take material from a little bit of them and a little bit of them and write it as your own? Or do you come up with everything fresh? Everything fresh. It's stealing. That's frowned upon the comedy community. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't steal from anybody. I've had enough interesting a little life, a, you know, a funny life that I, I don't have to steal from anybody. But uh -huh. I have uh, mentors and coaches that help me shape it, but it's all my ideas. Did you ever, did you ever go to like um, to Second City Improv School or any of those places, or, or hire a coach or work with a coach yeah. as far as on stage? And who's that coach? Who's that person? Uh, a couple, Bill Borgo uh -huh. and uh, Harry Hickstein and uh, a few other pieces of advice from different comedians along the way. But uh -huh. the they helped you like like uh, polish your act, huh? Right, and they give me lines that are really relevant to what I'm already doing. You know, I come up with ideas and they'll get, hey, you should try this, or uh -huh. you should say it this way instead of that way. Is there, is there a favorite uh, place or, or uh, type of audience that you have when you're, when you're speaking? Like, do you like to see uh, married couples out in the audience, or do you like to see young single people? What, what's your favorite type of audience to perform before? Older people. I do better in front of older people because a lot of the comedians are young college generation. Or extra work. Right, yeah. And uh, they don't understand my stuff as well as the older people. Ah, uh, very good. Couples. Well, we're looking forward to your material. Um, we're here on Tape with Rabbi Doug. Steven Singer, 
Give them your attention. We have a studio audience. Let's give them a hand. Hi, I'm Stephen Springer, like you said. And in case you're all wondering out there if I'm Jerry Springer's son. <laughs> I don't know, Jerry and I are going on Maury Povich next week to find out. <laughs> Stay tuned. I kind of hope I'm Jerry's son that I could use his residuals. <laughs> Not the money. The hookers. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. My wife's out there, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Rabbi Doug, when he introduced me, forgot to, you know, left out my main credit. 2020, you're on our up. The Mr. Potato had looked like him. Such a loser, I couldn't even come in first. <laughs> Make matters worse, you all heard about pota Mr. Potato becoming gender neutral. Nice as Potato Head. <laughs> I'm not cutting my spot off for anybody. Oh. In fact, if, uh, Shrek and Mr. Potato had had a baby, it'd be me. <laughs> be surprised by looking at me, but my dad's actually a plastic surgeon. I'm stuck looking like this way until I get my grades up. <laughs> Tell you the truth, he likes to use me for some before pictures. <laughs> Especially these breast enlargements. I loved him when I was a kid when he took me to work with him. Take your kid to work day. I thought he was going to get to see me some press. <laughs> then he just had me taken out the garbage. <laughs> well, I just celebrated my second wedding anniversary. Mazel tov. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my second time around, so I guess you could say I'm a repeat offender. <laughs> In fact, uh, we get along pretty well, except for sometimes I accidentally call her by my ex-wife's name. <laughs> That's a big no-no. I get in trouble for that, but... The thing is, my ex-wife's name's Angel, so I got away with it in the beginning, thinking, you know, she was thinking it was a term of endearment. Then when she found out, found out that was my ex-wife's name, she started calling me by her ex-husband's name. <laughs> ex-husband's name's Richard. No one likes to be called a dick. <laughs> but, uh, I had a lot of interesting jobs before I was a comedian, though. One of them was is a high-rise doorman at Lakeshore Drive. Mm. I opened doors for people. As a comedian, uh, people open doors for me. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, again, my name's Stephen Springer, and I was a TV star in the building. They had closed circuit TV to watch me work. They okay, sleep. <laughs> instead of the, it was the other Springer show. Instead of Jerry, Jerry. The residents would be like, Stephen, wake up. <laughs> Stephen, wake up. In fact, uh, one resident took a picture of me sleeping. Snapchat, you know what I realized? I look better with my eyes closed, my mouth open and drooling. <laughs> like when I'm awake. It's my, it's my new profile picture, my new side chat. People actually call and complain about me in the middle of the night. Why are they complaining? Why are they watch me at 3 in the morning on closed circuit TV? Don't they have anything better to do? A basis is their cable. Don't they know how to get porn? Another interesting job I had was I uh, was a bartender back in the 80s when I was young and good looking. I mean, I was young. I thought I'd meet a lot of women that way. You know, anyways, first night working there, realized something was different. No ladies in the place. Turned out to be a gay bar. Oh. <laughs> Not only a gay bar, a black gay bar. And I was a double minority and I didn't have a problem with that though. Problem was the guys all thought I was stuck up, like I was playing hard to get. <laughs> um, I did get a lot of phone numbers, so I thought the guys were just being friendly. No, they, um, uh, at least somebody liked me, at least I got some attention, but uh, I should have known to show you how stupid I was. I should have known it was a gay bar when I went in the interview. The name like the bro hole. <laughs> in fact, the manager that interviewed me had leather chaps and no behind. So um, I, I liked the style, so I bought me a pair the next day. <laughs> they running a lot of people that I knew, though, or I thought I knew. Be like, good for you, Steve. Be like, good for you, Dave. 
So I thought they were congratulating me because I had a job. <laughs> but to congratulate you and back and forth all night, uh, we finally ended up uh, spending the night drinking pita squads and dancing. And uh, I'm not gay, but I'll dance to the village people any night of the week while I'm here. <laughs> Last interesting job I had, one more and I'll move on. Like the Rabbi Doc said, I was a correctional officer in the Cook County Jail. It took me 15 years to figure out I didn't belong in that place in jail. <laughs> Some guys figured out five to ten. <laughs> Truth that I would have been there the rest of my career, but I had time off for bad behavior. <laughs> I used to like to try new material on the prisoners. Talk about a captive audience. <laughs> they laughed at everything. <laughs> Particularly with a gun to their head. <laughs> uh, working in a jail is kind of easy. And when it's not stressful, it's stressful. But when it, you park orders at the prisoners, like their wife, to do the work, <laughs> one of them makes you want to consummate the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit I was suited to be a jail guard. I uh, once pepper sprayed myself. <laughs> had the arrow facing the wrong direction. <laughs> Dyslexic. At least that sounds better than I'm an idiot. <laughs> also, once locked the uh, driving the inmates to court, I got out for a minute and locked the keys in the inmate in the van with the engine running and the dozen inmates handcuffed together. Uh, so I, I either had to break the window to get them out or slide a handcuff key in there to let them uncuff each other and hope they don't drive off. <laughs> I tell you how that story ended, but I'm trying to show up to the New reality show called Stupid Cops. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe they had the nerve to fire me for misplacing my gun? Several times. <laughs> Guns are like keys, you know, you lay them down somewhere, you forget where you put them, they fall off you. Second gun, they, uh, they can me because I lost in a game of poker, strip poker, to an inmate. <laughs> So it's taking my gun, they took my job, my uniform, and my dignity. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, they were put me in the psych unit. I chose to work there because I felt more comfortable with my own people. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, one day I heard too many inmates arguing in the washroom, back and forth. Go to break it up, it was one guy arguing with himself in two different voices. <laughs> so I let him beat the hell out of himself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it stressed me out so much here that uh, I used to call out, call in sick all the time to get away from the jail to hide out. So anyways, to hide out, next time they started asking for a doctor's note, they called in sick. To get a doctor's note, I called in nuts. I self-committed myself to the psych unit to hide out just to get my doctor's note. You know, sort of like one flew over a cuckoo's nest, <laughs> Jack Nicholson. And uh, I, I thought I'd just be there overnight. No, three day minimum. <laughs> what I get myself into. But you know, when the three days is up, I didn't want to leave. <laughs> What's there not to like about a psych unit? Free food, free drugs, beautiful women. Beautiful women made the business of free drugs. <laughs> But I actually got along better with the inmates than I did the officers. Inmates liked me a lot. They, I trusted them and they trusted me. They voted me guard of the month several months in a row. In fact, these inmate gangbangers all had street name nicknames like Shorty Mo Mafia Tone. They even had a nickname for me, Cracker. I think because I snacked a lot at work. I've been gone 10 years though. And I find that I still have my head in the jail mentally. I still use jail slang and lingo and act like I'm there. Uh -huh. Like once in a while, I'll tell my wife to put her shirt on in the day room. <laughs> you know, it's a common area of the jail. I think I'm still there, but uh, I'm thinking about going back though to the state or federal penitentiary to get another jail job. I miss it a little bit. I'm going to go to one of those prison websites, look at my ex-offenders for those references. <laughs> Not all of the ex-politicians. <laughs> so if, uh, I, I, I'm also thinking about becoming a bodyguard. Y'all see Kevin Costner? Mm. And 
I will always love you. So if any of you need a security guard for hire, I'm available. Don't worry about me having a gun. I still can't find mine. I got booted recently. And in case you're wondering how I didn't kick you out of a restaurant or bar, booted in the city, for those that aren't familiar, is when they put a metal contraption on your car so you can't move it. They give you a ticket for parking by making, they put it on there for parking by making you park longer. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I got uh, $1,500 in tickets and a car worth $500. Where am I going to get the money? Sell the car? <laughs> if I had $1,500, I'd buy a nice car. <laughs> Luckily, I had what it takes to get off. I stayed in touch with some inmates from the jail in my days to correctional officer. At one ex con said he'd take it off for $500. I counter off from keys to the car. Uh -huh. and this guy tells me he doesn't know how to start a car with keys. <laughs> <laughs> to make a long story short, I uh, are from keys to the car. Let's uh, how to start a car with keys. So, anyways, we get the boot off, take it back to the police station, thinking I get a deposit or reward. 30 days probation. Oh. I should have just donated to 1877 Cars for Kids. <laughs> would have been better off. <laughs> well, thanks, you all have been great. If you like my act, I'm Steven Springer. If you don't like it, I'm Jerry Springer. Thank you. Grown their toddler seat, they're still not ready for adult safety belts alone. Four foot nine is the magic number. Until then, kids need a booster seat. Make sure your little pumpkin gets there safely. Visit boosterseat.gov. Nobody likes me. Nobody. Maybe it's because I like to attack people men, women, kids. I can reduce them to weak, stammering, confused, scared imitations of their former selves. If they don't stop me, I just might leave them that way for life. I am a stroke. Learn to recognize a stroke and act quickly. Time lost is brain lost. I'm so glad to have you on the show. Thanks. So I have a lot of questions for you. For example, do, do you like sit at home and um, uh, sit at a desk and start saying, I gotta write down jokes. I gotta write down this story. I gotta write this down. Or are you, are you like driving in your car? Do you keep one of those memo things yeah. with you or your phone and say, oh, this just came into my head. I gotta make myself a note right, so yeah. I can go home and write that. And then I write it down, record it, and then I think about it for a while, come up with ideas, and uh -huh. pass it around with other comedians to get the ideas back from them. And uh -huh. by the time I'll fix my jokes, never written for good. It's always being reworked and improved upon. Uh -huh. And do you have do you have like different shows? For example, if if you're, if I, I don't know how it works in, in all the comedy clubs, but I know sometimes you're you're at a, sh at a show for two nights in a row or something like that. Do you change up the shows, or do you pretty much, uh, you know, when you're when you're doing a show, do you do a run with that show and then do another show with a new run like six months later or whatever? How do, how does it work work like that? Um, well, I'm different places, I'll, different audiences. So sometimes I'll do the same material. Sometimes I'll mix it up and do new material. It depends on how much time I get. Sometimes I get from six minutes to 20 minutes. Uh huh. Oh, so different shows have different depends on the lengths audience. of time. You have to tailor to the audience. If it's a young crowd, I'll do certain stuff. And if it's an older crowd, I'll you know, leave out certain stuff. And so when you started going out and doing live shows and things like that, did you do open mics? Did you go to like clubs that had open mics yeah, so that you right. could practice before you, you know, before you for actually went out and did it uh, for for a professional uh, type of show? Yeah, I did open mics, bar shows, where, uh, bar shows, anybody go up, uh -huh. and you, just other comedians mostly. So I, I didn't have to worry about impressing anybody, just myself. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I did that for a while before I started going to the clubs and get paid. Uh -huh. Very nice, very nice. How often 
do you, do you actually sit down and write new material? Is it, is it a constant thing? Is it uh, once every a day. month, twice, every day? Every day? Well, I'll just word in my day job. I'm a doorman on the midnight shift. So I spend most of my shift writing and working on my old material, improving it, and uh -huh. writing new stuff. Unless they're catching you sleeping and taking pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what is your, uh, what is your uh, favorite like old time comedy? So if we go back like into the 50s, you know, we have Laurel and Hardy, you know, we have the Marx Brothers and things like that. When you go back to old time comedy and, and you say, or you know, people like Jack Benny or Bob Hope, uh, uh, even, even Johnny Carson, when we go back to, to the 50s and 60s and, and, and stuff and those classic comedians, who's your favorite and why? Rodney Dangerfield. Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield, more you know, is more 70s. Three Stooges and uh, Jackie Gleason. Sure, 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 sure. A lot of people don't know Jackie Gleason was a stand-up before he was a, did the high motors. He was uh -huh. a stand-up. Uh -huh. So you like old Jackie Gleason stuff. Well, what else? What else besides him? Three Stooges. Three Stooges. Uh, Laurel and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy. So you're, you're into those things. Have you seen, like, all the old uh, comedy movies? Is that something? Do you watch them to get, like, uh, inspired? Uh, in, inspired, that's the kind of example. Because I don't asking. feel, I mean, I'm very... Yeah, yeah, you told me, you told me, you told, you told me that. But, but inspiration is, is sometimes comes from um, when you watch someone and you see their manner, right. or you see how they, how, what their presentation is, right. and you say, you know, I can okay. use that, I can use that style in, in some of my jokes and stuff to, to get, to get reaction. Do you, do you, do you do that? Yeah, I watch a lot of Laurel and Hardy and Three Stooges and Honeymooners. Uh-huh. Watch a lot of that. Uh -huh. And, and, and do you Jack think? Do, do you th so Jack, I love Jack Benny. Do, do you think that the the old uh, sitcom type of movies uh, or or shows uh, in in that style, things like the Honeymooners stuff, the uh, I Love Lucy, things like that? Do you think that that those shows have more of an influence on comedians today, or do you think that uh, uh, just uh, other stand-ups have have influenced more? I think other stand-ups influence the younger kids in their twenties. They went around and I know they're on the reruns, but they're influenced more by like uh, other comedians like Richard Pryor and what's another big name? Uh, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, Eddie Murphy, people like that, the more recent people. Like sure, that. sure, sure. So I, I, I got to commend you because in, in, your, in your presentation, there's no uh, 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 swearing, there's no uh, uh, off color, dirty, dirty talk or anything like that. Um, is, is it hard? Not to follow the, uh, you know, if you turn on uh, late night cable TV and see these comedians, everybody's swearing, everybody's right. using uh, profanity and, and, and sexual uh, innuendos in their, in their comedy, and you don't really do that. Is, is it hard to not do that when others are doing it and, and people, you see other people laughing at it? Right. Or do you think that, uh, you know, the way that you uh, perfect your style is something that uh, you could continue to do without going on those routes? And still get uh, you know a good reaction from your audiences. It's easy, it's easy to be clean, and you get more work. But a lot of places, especially TV, if you want to get on TV, you have to be clean. Uh -huh. They don't allow any swearing. Right, or right, right. Dirty, right, right, right. stuff. So would would you say that um, people who are funnier, like uh, uh, who've appeared on like well, the, the classic, would be the Tonight Show right. with Johnny Carson? A lot of people got their starts with Johnny Carson, who who became famous and and. and were big comedians and are big comedians still if they're still alive right. and stuff. Would you say that, that that stuff is is bigger than people that got their uh, starts in, in comedy clubs? Yeah, I mean, Johnny Carson started a lot of careers. Seinfeld and uh, Roseanne. And sure, sure, sure. That's the best way to get famous is being on TV. Yeah. Well, they started, the people that were on this show started in the club. That's how they got their start. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Interesting, interesting. Um, is there a... Uh, is there a today, like in the modern young people, is there someone that you admire? Locally or nationally? Uh, locally or nationally, or both? Uh, my favorite in the, lo the local scene is uh, Larry Reed. Right, you mentioned Larry Reed. We, those who know local comedy know him. And then my two coaches uh, are good comedians too, the, you know, Bill Gorgo and Harry uh, -huh, uh -huh. What, um, What do you think uh, inspires most comedians to go into this field? Is it that they have the talent? Is it that they're looking to uh, 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 
come out in, in, in that type of uh, style like you did. You know, here you were a shy guy and mm -hmm. you came out and all of a sudden you're, you're making people laugh everywhere you go. Uh, what is it that inspires people to go into comedy? Um, well, you know, I, I, I'll tell you, my, my, just because the reason I'm asking that is because, you know, here I, I'm on television and, and, and I speak before people all the time and stuff like that. And I've said, oh, you know, I heard this comedian, I heard this joke, and I'm not scared to steal jokes. If somebody will laugh at it, I'll get up and retell it. But you know what? I can never do it. I can't retell those jokes the way that they did right. and, 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 and have the timing and, and, and stuff. You know, I can tell a story and make people laugh with a joke in it, but I can't retell jokes in a, in a comedian style type of presentation. Uh, what is it that, that gets people into it and, and helps them, um, uh, you know, perfect that, that style? Because I can't do it. Well, you really got to want to do it. You got to devote a lot of time to it. You know, it's not that you got to go to open mics three, three, four times a week. Perfect it. Anybody can do it. I mean, if you want to improve, you but if you want to become a comedian. So cool. So cool. I, I absolutely, absolutely uh, love the fact that you're doing this. Thanks. I think you are so funny. Thanks. I think that your straight face and, and your um, uh, presentation is classic, almost unlike anybody else in the business that yeah. I've ever seen. And, and, and I enjoyed it so much. And I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Do you have any... any um, uh, desires or, or, or plans for the future that you haven't done that you want to move into? Uh, I want to headline one day, but I'm I've got to work my way up to that and uh -huh. get more material. Uh -huh. You know, I, I want to, I wouldn't mind, I'm on a reality show actually that's coming out later this year. One of them, slang for one of them. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's going to be on the Roku network. Oh, very nice, very nice. So well, I, I, hope it goes, I hope it goes well. Congratulations. And you'll let me know a little bit about that. I would love to know. I, I want to thank you for being on the show. I want to thank our studio audience for being here. Uh, you have been such a joy to have on. I want to thank all of you for being with us. Remember, you can check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com. If you uh, want to send an email to Stephen, uh, you can send us an email, info at tvrabbi.com, and I will forward that to him, and I know he'll get back to you personally. Um, can you leave us with a joke? Uh, something come to mind right offhand? Uh, you know, either a, a line, a, a, something you didn't share with us? Uh, yeah, um, you know, my uh, wife's real cool. She, uh, the day before we got married, she actually took me to a, you know, a strip club for my own bachelor party. Uh -huh. Uh, the only thing that I'm cool about that she had to stay the whole time, like you know, like a jail guard, a warden looking over you when you get out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to buy me a lap dance, but uh, couldn't find my lap. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank yeah. you, Steve. Steven Springer, everyone. Thank you all for being with us. Hope to see you next time right here on Take It With Air. My dog, show them, everyone. See Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. Hi, this is John Records Landecker, and this has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.